Assemblyman Tom Abenanti. Um, I have, I'm joined by uh, several of my esteemed colleagues. We'll, we'll pass the microphone over one to the other, and each one will introduce the one following them. How's that? Um, several years ago, I read in the New York Times about uh, a situation where a, uh, a young fellow at school um, went into an anaphylactic um, condition, um, collapsed, and the teacher stood around um, thinking about an EpiPen, an injector that contained epinephrine. But they couldn't use the ones they had in storage because they were dedicated to a particular kid with a prescription, a specific prescription. So we thought about, well, what could we do about that? And came up with the idea that we should allow schools to stock Epi EpiPens. At the same time, John Terry and his group were working on this. Several of the companies that make these devices were working on this. My colleagues in the Senate were talking about it, and we all came together, and we passed a piece of legislation a couple of years ago which allows schools to stock epinephrine in case they need it. We then thought about it, this happens elsewhere, not just in schools. It happens in places of public gathering. People get stung by bees. They have food allergies. They, too, need this type of response. So we've all been working together again. Uh, we've had various versions of the bill. The Senate has passed two, has passed two bills already. Um, we are poised to pass the latest version that the Senate has passed, uh, which is sponsored by... Senator Hannon, and we're hopeful we're going to be able to pass that very shortly. Uh, more and more people need this special medication and, and, the, and these uh, devices, um, but they're really of no use if they're not readily available. So this measure is a common sense approach uh, to help prevent av avoidable tragedies by ensuring that these devices that contain epinephrine um, are available and timely accessible. Um, these auto injectors have saved lives in the past and will save more lives as we make them more readily available. Just as the AED advice, devices uh, that are placed in public places uh, to prevent um, and treat heart attacks uh, have saved lives. It's vital that New York uh, policy recognizes that epinephrine is a first line of treatment for those uh, experiencing anaphylaxis. So I'm very pleased to be here today to thank all of you for working so hard and to urge you to keep working because we've got to now get the bill through the assembly and then we've got to get the governor's office to sign it. And I'm hopeful, in fact, I'm optimistic that we're going to get it done this year. I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Senator Hannon, uh, Senator Kemp Hannon, who is the chair of the uh, Senate Health Committee, uh, who's already steered this through his house and uh, sent it over to us. Uh, and I want to thank him for his efforts and, and introduce him. Um, one of our visitors here today was kind enough to give us, uh, to lend us her uh, EpiPen. Uh, this is what it looks like. She carries it around with her all of the time uh, to make it available in case she needs it uh, because of her allergies. We want to make these available to as many people as possible to, to prevent uh, these avoidable um, deaths, I guess, basically. That's what's... Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you, and thank you for your great enthusiasm um, for doing this and moving this forward. Um, I was reminded as you... We've already passed this, but I was reminded, let me go back and look at the history of what we've done with the Senate Health Committee. Um, and... Um, in 1999, we passed the first EpiPen law. And I was reminded last night how far we have had to come since then because you did the school bill. Um, now we're trying to broaden this to any public entity that wants to do it. But also, I said, what, what's happened with the state of allergies? What's happened with food allergies? What do we do to protect? And did, thanks to the Internet, um, I came across a couple of articles, and I was interested to see that we've come 
about 150 degrees in terms of the guidance that um, uh, doctors will give, especially to moms who've just had a new baby. But we haven't come 180 degrees, which means we haven't solved the problem of people who have food allergies. And we don't totally know what to expect when it's going to happen. So we still need to have EpiPens available. This is a pretty fancy one they use for the training, um, not the one that someone carries around. But we still need to do this. And so I was delighted uh, to be able to participate. Uh, Senator Amador has worked on this himself. Senator Razenhoff has worked on this. Assemblyman Noje is going to, they're all going to say a little, few words. But I also just wanted to congratulate um, FAIR, which is the Food Allergy Research and Education, which has a table outside. And um, also really thank the Allergy uh, Advocacy Association because, Mr. Terry, you have a little flyer that said we've passed it in the Senate uh, already. <laughs> so appreciate that. Um, but your work is needed even more now than ever. And uh, the science, the medical science, and its research being done in New York at Mount Sinai, we need to continue all of this and move forward. So I'm delighted to be part of all of this. You guys are great supportive. I'm going to let you talk to Senator Amador. But I have to ask, you are all great young ladies here. And you were also holding a picture of somebody. Are you going to tell us a little bit about why you're holding the picture? Why don't you do that first? OK. I just let me get my notes. <laughs> and by the way, this microphone doesn't work. It's only a prop, so you have to speak loudly. Okay. <laughs> OK. Welcome to the New York State Legislature. <laughs> Hello. My name is Georgina Cornago Cipriano. I live in Lawrence, New York. I am a teacher's assistant for special needs children, and I am also a mother of two, two very beautiful children. I am here on behalf of my son, Giovanni Cipriano, who I lost two years ago. His life was taken too soon on October 18th, 2013, at only 14 years of age because of a food allergy. Giovanni was a happy little boy, always a happy little boy. He was always he always had a smile on his face he was always running jumping dancing from the time he woke up to the time he went to sleep even when he was sleeping he was still running jumping and dancing in his dreams he was a star athlete he wanted to be a professional baseball player i believe he would have been he was a best friend he was a best brother he is terribly missed by his teammates by his friends by his sister he was my little boy, my little man. He took care of me, and I took care of him. He was my friend. He was my partner. He was the reason I did everything I did. He was his dad's pride and joy. To say his dad is lost without him is an understatement. He was an honor student. He knew to be helpful. He knew to be of service, to be respectful. He knew how to seize the day and to run with it. Giovanni's loss is felt not just here in our family, in our community, but in the food allergy community all over the country as well. Giovanni's loss is awful. It is heart-wrenching. It doesn't make sense. It is taught, if it has taught me one thing, it is that I know I don't want anyone to know how I feel and that I want to help educate and advocate for all the families living with food allergies. I want everyone to know that food allergies are not just serious, they are life-threatening. Food allergies can mean life or death. Epinephrine is the difference between that life or death outcome. Epinephrine is the first line of treatment for anaphylaxis, a potentially life-threatening fatal reaction. Epinephrine currently is the only approved treatment for anaphylaxis and timing is crucial when administering it. So, as soon as a reaction is suspected. Delay in epinephrine can result in death in less than 30 minutes. Anaphylaxis can strike anyone at any time, even in those with no prior allergy. Stop, stock epinephrine legislation is important because it will expand the availability of epinephrine in New York and the number of trained and authorized people to use it. Food allergies are on the rise. There is no cure for food allergies. 15 million Americans have food allergies. 
including 5.9 million children under the age of 18. That's approximately one in 13 in every classroom. A food allergy reaction sends someone to the ER every three minutes. Stock epinephrine legislation will mean the lives of all our family, friends, and children will be better protected. I know as a support group leader, an educator, and especially as the mother who promised her little boy, I would do everything in my power to help others to not have to walk in my shoes, that this bill would surely make for a safer place for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your very courageous statement. <clears throat> Senator Amador, you have a very tough act to follow. Yes, thank but you. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hannon and all, and Georgina, for being here. Uh, I have a close, a similar story uh, with my son when my wife and I first found out that our oldest, at the age of nine, had an allergy that was life threatening, and we almost lost our firstborn because of the allergy. But we're here to make public policy and to help everyone in the public here have some common sense uh, measures, medicine, antidotes that would really help keep someone alive. And we all know that this is simple, that this can be life-saving, and that this is something that we should have across the state of New York. So as a member of the state senate, and uh, working with our colleagues in the assembly, we call upon the state assembly to pass this common sense legislation, this bill, and we can continue to advance, I think, good public policy, sensible public policy that will make us all, all New Yorkers, our children, and all of those who are affected by an allergy safe, alive, and be good for all of us. So I look forward to working with my colleagues Senator Hannon, thank you again for getting us to 180 or 150 degrees. Now let's move to 180 degrees and we can get things going. At this time, I'm going to un, um, introduce Assemblyman Nojay. Thank you, Senator. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, this is, a, this is a great group and uh, very, very happy to be here and thank the leadership of Senator Hannon, who's done a great job in getting this legislation through after many years of trying. and. Uh, Assemblyman Aminati, who is uh, taking the lead on this in the State Assembly. Uh, I'm here as the color commentator because I am maybe the only member of the legislature who's actually had epinephrine used on me. Uh, some years ago, and with no allergies in my history at all, uh, never had an allergic reaction, uh, I had a sinus uh, cold one day and my doctor prescribed ampicillin. So in the evening, I, I popped an ampicillin uh, as, uh, as I was tucking the kids into bed. Uh, and all of a sudden my hand started itching, and which I thought it was a mosquito, except it was February. Uh, and then my other hand, and within about five minutes, I was uh, uh, highly agitated. I was beet red. I went downstairs. My wife, who was a nurse, looked at me and said, we got a problem here. Uh, and if for all, any of you who have not gone through a near-death experience, it really is like something out of the cartoons. Uh, the room starts to circle on you, and you start to see little stars of light. And uh, that is right before, as I walked uh, approaching my wife as she was dialing 911, uh, the lights went out. That's the last, uh, and you learn if you are in the medical business, that sound is the last sense you lose. And uh, the last sensation I had was the sound of my body hitting the kitchen floor. Uh, I woke up uh, in the back of a volunteer ambulance and uh, not having any idea what, was, what had happened to me uh, because I would, had uh, effectively suffocated. Uh, you start to go through, you start breathing, <gasps> you start gasping for breath. And uh, they had hooked me up to an epinephrine uh, 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 shot, which saved my life. Well, I went to the ambulance corps a few weeks later, wanted to write them a check, and they said, well, we don't really need money, we need you. We need warm bodies, we need volunteers. So I became an EMT. And in the course of my years driving an ambulance, I used EpiPens on people who, like me, didn't even realize they had allergies. Uh, we almost every holiday season would wind up going on an emergency call and a priority one to somebody's house where somebody ate a shrimp or a peanut or some other uh, allergen without even knowing that they had this allergy uh, and well into adulthood had a first experience with a, an anaphylactic reaction 
uh, and our injection of uh, epinephrine using an EpiPen uh, in, in every case saved their lives because we were able to get there quick enough. If you don't get there quick enough, then you have tragedy, which is why this legislation, it's not a Democrat-Republican issue or a liberal conservative issue or an Assembly-Senate issue. It is an issue that we can all agree upon. Uh, having EpiPens available throughout our population and people trained to use them, and as we develop the technology and new medical uh, ways of applying epinephrine, uh, new devices, we need to make sure that just like AEDs, that they are available in all public places. So I am very pleased to co-sponsor this legislation. Again, I thank the Senator uh, and the Assemblyman for their tremendous leadership. And I'd now like to introduce one of my good friends in the New York State Senate who has also taken great leadership positions on many issues and whose district is contiguous or adjacent to mine, Mike Resenhofer. Mike, Senator, thank you. Thank you, Assemblyman. Here, because this thing is, this uh, microphone doesn't work, but you have to speak loudly. Will you be able to do that? But I was really thinking about how we can get epinephrine to train counselors and people at pools so people with food allergies can enjoy camps and sleepaway camps without having to worry about reactions and no one being, being able to use the epinephrine on them. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you. My name is Maya Konoff. I'm 15 years old, and I have anaphylactic food allergies to dairy products, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, and sesame seeds. I was diagnosed with my allergies after a near-fatal reaction at the age of nine months old. And so to stay safe, I never leave my house without my EpiPen, no matter where I'm going. If I'm with my family, if I'm with my friends, I always have a, at least one epinephrine auto injector with me. And but there are a lot of people who aren't as lucky as me to have had a diagnosis that still have food allergies, but they don't know about them, and they can just as easily go into anaphylactic shock as I can. So it's really important to have epinephrine available at public places where it can save so many lives of the people who have undiagnosed food allergies. Thank you. Um, and we went to a restaurant, and I... Um, had asked the waiter if there was anything that he thought might be safe for me. And he said, well, let's go take a look. And he had a big book with lots of um, everything that was on the menu and ingredients to everything in them. And I think that could be something that we could have here. And he had told me it was a law there. And I thought that was something interesting that we next, could have here. Next step, why don't you stand up though and show everybody your your bag and what you're doing. Let them read. Uh. So um, I used to have a fanny pack, but then my dad decided that we should get something a little bit more nice. So <laughs> um, we got this, but he taped it and um, put the EpiPen inside and the medical cross and all the phone numbers that could be needed. Okay. Very practical. Thank you. <laughs> Good day. I'm John Terry. I'm the founder of the Allergy Advocacy Association. I'd like to express my sincere thanks to the members of the legislature that have supported uh, legislation uh, to improve access to epinephrine and raise awareness of the dangers of anaphylaxis. I'd like to particularly thank Senator Hannon and Assemblyman Abenanti for their support. I'd also like to thank all the members of Food Allergies Research and Education, the families that have done so much for so many years uh, at, across America in support of uh, families who have uh, children with life-threatening allergies and asthma, and have done so much work to uh, uh, raise awareness and uh, to work together to support those families uh, in dealing with the issues that are of such a serious nature uh, each and every day of their lives. This is a photo of my sister, Ruth T. Cornell. Ruthie um, was a victim of anaphylaxis. She uh, suffered a fatal attack after being stung by a honeybee. According to the Center for Disease Control, 50% of all fatal insect stings occur to someone that has no, had no previous history of anaphylaxis or allergy to insect venom. 
my sister's uh, death was a, a result of a perfect storm of events that occurred. She did not even realize that she was allergic to uh, bee stings and she was a beekeeper. She was a beekeeper. So uh, in memory of Ruthie, uh, I have, uh, I founded the Allergy Advocates Association and have continued our work to try in this area to save lives. It is my sincere feeling and the belief of our association and food allergies research and education that the Emergency Allergy Treatment Act is another step down that road here in New York State. Across the country, 22 other states have passed uh, legislation of a similar nature to EATA and uh, we're very uh, hopeful that it will pass here uh, in New York State very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, the vision of the Allergy Advocacy Association and the Food Allergies Research and Education is a clear and direct one. None love I've lost to anaphylaxis. None love I've lost to any life-threatening allergies. Thank you. Best wishes. I just want to acknowledge